In the span of just 100 days in 1994, Rwanda was consumed by an unspeakable horror that saw the brutal massacre of between 500,000 and 1 million of its inhabitants, marking one of the darkest chapters in modern history. This period of intense violence, known as the Rwandan Genocide, unfolded with a chilling efficiency and brutality that is hard to fathom. At the heart of the genocide was a deeply entrenched ethnic divide between the Hutu majority and the Tutsi minority, a divide that had been exacerbated by colonial rule and manipulated by political leaders. The assassination of President Juvenal Habyarimana on April 6, 1994, served as the catalyst for the genocide, with the Hutu government swiftly enacting a premeditated plan to eliminate the Tutsi population. What followed was an eruption of violence that was staggering in both its scale and its savagery. The machete became a symbol of the genocide, wielded with ruthless efficiency by the inter ahamwe militia and ordinary citizens alike. The brutality was unimaginable, with victims being hacked to death, women being raped, and countless lives being mercilessly extinguished. Churches, which should have been sanctuaries of peace, became sites of mass killings. These sacred spaces were surrounded by killers who then slaughtered the men, women, and children inside, often after torturous ordeals. The bloodshed at these sites, such as the Antarama Church, is a stark testament to the depth of the hatred that fueled the genocide. Amidst this unfolding catastrophe, the international community stood largely as a silent witness. Despite clear indications of the scale and the specificity of the violence, the world hesitated to intervene or to label the atrocities as genocide. Throughout this brutality and savagery, music remained. In today's exploration, we dive into the complex legacy of Simon Bikindi, a figure whose music echoes through the corridors of history, intertwined with the tragedy of the Rwandan genocide. Bikindi, a Rwandan singer, songwriter and composer, became infamously known for his songs that played a significant role in inciting ethnic hatred and violence. His melodies, which were once celebrated for their artistry, became symbols of division between Hutu and Tutsi. Following the genocide, Bikindi faced serious allegations by the prosecution at the UN. He was indicted on six counts, including conspiracy to commit genocide, genocide or complicity in genocide, direct and public incitement to commit genocide, along with murder and persecution as crimes against humanity. On December 2, 2008, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda convicted Bikindi of direct and public incitement to commit genocide due to his appeals for the extermination of Tutsis in late June 1994 along the kivumu Kayovi Road while exonerating him of all other charges. In its analysis and judgment, the trial chamber clarified that songs, depending on their content and the context of their delivery, could indeed serve as a vehicle for direct and public incitement to commit genocide or persecution as crimes against humanity. However, it determined that the evidence presented failed to substantiate Bikindi's involvement in a conspiracy to commit genocide, count one nor could it affirm his criminal responsibility for genocide and complicity in genocide, counts two and three. The tribunal found Bikindi criminally liable as the principal instigator in the explicit calls for the killing of Tutsis on the kivumu Kayovi Road in late June 1994, thereby convicting him on the fourth count of the indictment. Further examination led the chamber to conclude that the prosecution did not prove Bikindi's criminal responsibility for murder as a crime against humanity, count five. Likewise, Bikindi was acquitted of aiding and abetting persecution, count six, as there was insufficient evidence to prove his involvement in the distribution or promotion of certain songs in 1994. After evaluating the severity of the offense, alongside mitigating and aggravating factors and accounting for time already served, the chamber decided on a 15-year prison sentence for Bikindi. This judgment highlights the nuanced considerations of the court, 
in distinguishing between the various charges, ultimately holding Bikindi accountable for his direct role in encouraging genocidal actions through his public exhortations. He would later die in prison on December 5th, 2018.